Now, India's tough policies extend to Russia as well. We've been buying a lot of Russian oil since the last year. Paying for them has become a challenge now. Let me explain. Russia wants India to pay in the yuan, the Chinese currency. But New Delhi has a policy against that. The Finance Ministry of India has cautioned against using the yuan. Despite that, some transactions were made. Even state-owned Indian oil paid Russia in the yuan. But not anymore. The government has put its foot down. It has reportedly told refiners, don't pay in Chinese currency. Not all refiners, though. Only the state-owned ones have been told this. The private refiners are free to make their choice. The government will neither stop them nor help them. Now, to give you some context, around 70% of India's refiners are state-owned. So a government dicta diktat is crucial. Let's break down what this issue is all about. We're looking at five questions here. Number one, how does India usually pay Russia? It's a cocktail of currencies. Some UAE dirhams, some US dollars, and some Indian rupees. The idea here is to sidestep the G7 cap. The G7 allows Russian oil purchases up to $60, meaning $60 per barrel. That's what you can pay. But what's the rate right now? More than $80. So the difference is paid in other currencies, like rupees and dirhams. Just one problem, though. Russia has too many Indian rupees with it, billions of rupees that Moscow cannot use. Which brings us to question number two. Why does Russia want the yuan? Because they use a lot of it. Russia's imports from China are up 12.8%. They're worth around $76 billion. So having more yuan helps Russia. They can use it to buy goods from China. In fact, the yuan is now the most traded currency in Russia. It beat the US dollar this year. Question number three, why is India resisting the yuan? Well, the reason is obvious. India and China are engaged in a border standoff. Beijing is claiming land that belongs to New Delhi. In August this year, they released a new map. It claimed the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. So why should India use the yuan? Why should India help internationalize the Chinese currency? That seems to be the government's argument. Now, question number four, how will this affect India's oil trade? Well, so far, the supply is fine, but reports say around seven cargoes have been delayed. They cannot decide on the payment. If such issues persist, it could be a worry. And I'll tell you why. Russia is now India's largest oil supplier. Our total oil bill is around $11 billion. And out of this, $4 billion is from Russia. So a solution has to be found. And one option is diversification. Or in this case, going back to the old status quo. India's petroleum minister spoke about this. Let me quote from what he said. Our dependence on Russian oil is going to decrease sharply. The cost viability from the Gulf is much more attractive now. Now, just to clarify, this statement was made last month before the war between Israel and Hamas. Nonetheless, you get the thought process. You cannot depend on one source for 50% of your oil, even if it's a friend like Russia. And finally, question number five. What does China make of this decision? Well, Beijing has not reacted officially, but their faithful state media has. This is what they've said. The Indian government's decision is an, is an ill-advised move as it will push up costs and hamper normal operations. What a surprise. China thinks India is wrong. Of course they do. Beijing would love for India to start using the yuan. We are talking about one of the biggest importers in the world. Our total import bill, India's total import bill, is close to $900 billion dollars. So if India uses the yuan, it's a boost for China, which is why the government is pushing back. But simply shunning the yuan is not enough. It's important to address the root problem here. Why does Russia want the yuan, but not the rupee? Because there is not much to buy from India. If India wants to internationalize the rupee, that must change. India will have to drastically improve its exports. Only then will the rupee become desirable.